All right, we're spending another day out in the shop because we need to do something for this truck and we're going to do a project and we're going to make something work. Uh, basically, I got some stuff that I need to do and in order to do it, I need a bench harness for this truck. Now, I realize there are a ton of videos out there about making bench harnesses, harnesses for these trucks, but my concern is, or what I find, is that as a person who likes to watch stuff and perhaps find uh, ways to improve or make things better, uh, I like to make videos on stuff like that. Also, the other thing that I found was that a lot of videos that I watched were not necessarily clear or very understandable, um, and some stuff could be missed. Or the other side of it is that I feel that there could be improvements made um, just to how you build these things. Uh, case in point, they will tell you that you need three things that are blue PCM connector, OBD2 port, and a power supply. Um, now I've seen videos where you could probably get away with half amp adapters, uh, but most people are saying go for at least a one amp adapter. So, um, if you got one laying around your house, great. If not, you can pick them up cheap. I got this one off Amazon, I think for $12. Um, now when it comes to power adapters, you can see that I have two power adapters here. Um, one is a two amp, one is a one amp, but what I found was, is that they're very different. So this one here, if you look at it, you can see it's a, a split wire where this one is a single wire sheathing. And what I found was uh, when you clear out the sheathing, you're left with these like 24 gauge wires, which just, in my opinion, are just going to be a real difficult to, um, solder or try and get any wires attached to that so that one's out so that's why i've got this one here because like i said it's got that split so when i cut this tip off um, i'll have much better wire to solder things to now where i feel that things can be approved upon this is by picking up one of these so this just plugs into your wall but it gives you a power uh, a switch here so when you're building this, what you'll do is you just plug this guy into here. So that way, when you're hooking your power supply up to your, uh, to your harness, you're not getting an immediate flow of juice. This will control that, uh, that constant source going off. The other thing is, is a switch. You'll want this because uh, this harness relies on both a constant and a switched. Now, a lot of people don't put the switched into it, but uh, sometimes when you're doing PCM programming, it does want you to it does want to see that ignition on off. So just spend a couple of bucks, get a switch, put it in. Another thing that I don't see people adding to these is something that I believe is extremely critical because we are talking with electricity with very sensitive electronics and that's picking up one of these guys here. And basically what this is, it's just a little inline fuse that you can put into your into your power feed off your power supply so that you have at least some form of protection so that if for any sake you get a spike or something happens you'll have that little fuse in there to help protect your system and with that you'll also want to pick up like these little one amp fuses which you just put which you'll just insert into the holder. Now this one's waterproof, so you don't necessarily have to put the cover on. And I don't think I will because I think it's gonna be more difficult to put it in than it needs to be. So there, we now have a one amp fuse 
so that we have a means to ensure that our system is completely protected. And then what I did, just to keep things simple, is I made a wiring diagram. So this here is your OBD2 connector, or sorry, your, your blue PCM. So you got four wires, one, 19, 20, and 58. Ground, ignition, uh, 12 volt switched. And then you'll have um, battery positive, which is your constant, and then your serial data. And then on your OBD2 port, two, four, five, and 16 is your serial ground, ground, and your battery positive again, which is your constant. And so what I did on the back, just to make things a little more sensible, green is pin one for ground, pin 20, red, because that's your constant, so hot all the time. Yellow is ignition switched, and purple is for your serial port. And I did the serial because on the OBD2 port, the serial is also purple. So that makes that simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just put the camera down, show you guys what's going on here. Um, I'm gonna get all the wires stripped, everything cleared out, uh, get it made, and then we'll plug it in, make sure we have the power in accordance to where it needs to be. Once everything is good, we'll solder it. And once we have it soldered, then we'll wrap this thing up and uh, check for voltages and make sure everything's good. So just gonna set you up here, give me a couple seconds and we'll get building on this.
Okay, so I had to do some reconfiguring and figuring out what was going on because I wasn't getting the voltage I was expecting. Uh, turns out these pins are a little deeper than I anticipated. So I got it in there good now, ground's good. You can see voltage is reading uh, nothing right now because it's not connected. Power is on. So voltage, zero. We'll connect this to pin 20. 12 volts. I will turn on the ignition. Pin 19. 12 volts. Turn off the ignition. And OBD2 port for constant. 12 volts. So. I know now that everything in this, I now know that everything in the system is wired, works correctly. Fuse works good over there. Um, I gotta figure out this, cause it doesn't seem to be working as it should. Um, I'll show you why. So I just plugged this back in and I'm thinking it probably works off of ground and this power supply I have does not have ground. So right now, um, this power switch is in an off position, but if I come back over here, and I go to pin 20, you can see 12 volts, it's on. Now if I turn it off, come back, I still have 12 volts. So I don't think this little switch is going to work because I have a feeling that it works off of the ground and with no ground on here, it's just gonna do whatever. So for now, this won't work and I just have to plug it in and just do as it is. Um, maybe I'll find one that works differently or better, but for now, uh, everything is wired, works well, confirmed. So now I'm going to spend the time, solder it and wrap it and get it back, get it to a nice state. All right. So I got everything soldered, shrink wrapped and loomed. And so I'll just show you it here in a second. So here is our power in. We got our one amp fuse to our OBD2 port which runs along to our ignition switch here, which then feeds into our blue connector to our PCM. I am using a VX Di VX Diag VX Nano um, reader. The reason I went with this for is because the majority of the cheaper ones on Amazon, um, while they will work for this purpose, do not support the 4X protocol and PCM hammer. Um, the downside to that is the newer PCMs are one meg uh, units. So if you try downloading the binary off of it on a, on a non 4X, you're gonna be looking at like 45 minutes. Um, that can be cut in half still to about 20 uh, if you use a 4X communication. So here's my reader plugged in, goes to my laptop. You can see I got PCM hammer loaded. You can see here battery voltage 11.834. I would like to see that a little more towards 12 volts, but that's it is what it is. Uh, you can see connected to the device. You can see select device, reinitialize, read, text, and write are enabled. If I hit read properties, this will tell me information. So there's the VIN, that's off the truck, the OS, the hardware type, P59, calibration, hardware, serial number, blah, blah, down the list. So this now tells me that I was successful at creating my GM harness, which is good. It tells me I have a P59 PCM, which is good. And so now um, what I will be doing uh, is some further testing on this, but as it is now and it looks, everything is working, so that's good. The reason I built this for is because um, I need to do some tuning on this truck, on this truck, because again, it's running 35 inch tires and the speedometer is way out and I need to fix that. And to fix that, um, I need to use a tool uh, to connect to my PCM in that truck, but I wanna have a backup just in case something goes wrong. It shouldn't, but I'd rather it not. So. Uh, that's about it. Um, oh, if you guys are interested, 
This is basically a wiring schematic that you can take a screenshot if you will. This is the blue connector, which basically says pin one, 19, 20, 58 for ground, uh, ignition 12 volt uh, switch, battery positive, which is constant, and 58 for serial. Uh, OBD2 connector, pin two is serial data, pin four and five are ground, 16 is battery positive for constant. And then I just made like a little diagram here to kind of lay out um, what the connections do and where they go. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, other than that, that's about it for this one. So thanks again for watching and keep look forward to the next ones coming up and I will see you in the next one. Till next time. Thank you.